Hi, Karen Alari here. We're going to jump right into this little 8x10 painting and you can find the materials list in the description below. I'm using my usual palette. I've got titanium white, Hansa yellow medium, Indian yellow, naphthal red light, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and thalo blue green shade. So what I'm going to do, as, as I like to do, is I'm going to start by just putting one layer of paint on the canvas, and that's called toning the canvas. And I think I'm going to go with a yellow tone this time. So I'm just going to start with some of my hands of yellow, and I'm going to put a bunch of white in it. I'm just uh, brushing this on thinly because I want it to dry quickly so I'm not I'm not putting a thick layer and I'm brushing it back and forth a few times with my fairly firm it's it's a firm brush it's a synthetic brush it's flat across the edge and it's about maybe a half an inch wide a little wider Okay, so there's our yellow. Now we're going to be using this little painting as a reference, but we're going to change up our colors a little bit on this one. I want to go with a yellow and yellow greens in the background, and then I'm going to go with blues and blue greens in the tree. So let's see how that goes. I'm going to work on this idea of a yellow and green background and when you work with a, a sky you know I have this gradation that goes on in these paintings and the gradation is really important it just adds interest to the to the painting and so I'm going to decide what color shift I'm going to have you, you you're generally in a sky going to go from darker to lighter and from warmer to cooler I'm going to use yellows and greens and green is cooler than yellow, but yellow is lighter than green unless I make a really light green, which I might. So I'm either going to go yellow to green or green to yellow. I think I'm going to go yellow to green. So let's see if we're dry enough here. Pretty close. It's a little bit tacky. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some yellows and some greens to start with. So I've got my white and I'm adding yellow to it. This is our hands of yellow medium. And then I'm going to move into green with some hands of yellow. I'm going to add a tiny bit of thalo blue to it. And I'm using thalo because in this kind of a painting I'm looking for bright pretty colors. If I were looking for more natural, more muted colors I would go with my ultramarine blue because it just tends to be more muted when you're making greens. But I want a nice bright color. But I also want to go lighter as I get to the horizon. So I'm going to make this a very, very light green. So I'm putting more white into it. And I want this yellow to be brighter. Right now I've got quite a bit of white in it, so I'm going to put more yellow in it. But I, but I won't have to worry about it too much because I've already got yellow back here. So that's going to, that's going to uh, go a long ways towards adding my... If you're, if, if you're working along with me and your background isn't quite dry yet, you'll be able to tell because your brush will drag... And, and the color it will start picking up the wet paint underneath it and if it does that just give it another minute or two to dry depending on how dry your air is where you are it shouldn't take too long so when you're working with um, when you're working with blending in acrylics it might go up a little higher I'm gonna I'm gonna have my ground level about it's going to be low down here somewhere but when you're blending with acrylics 
you have to work really quickly. That's really super key with blending with acrylics because they're going to dry, right? So you lay down that paint. I would even use a bigger brush than I'm using right now. This brush is kind of small for what I'm trying to do because it makes it harder to just get enough paint on the canvas and have it be still wet. So I put some straight white on there. I'm just kind of blending those together. So as long as you your paint is wet, you can just pull them up and blend the two wet colors together. You can add a little white right onto it if you decide it's a little too dark. You can add the white right on the canvas. And I'm making big sweeping strokes all the way across and blending that up into the yellow, which is still wet. It, you can also get a little bit of water on your brush if it starts drying out just barely touch into your water dish and you can keep it going for a little bit longer but i'm just looking to get an interesting gradation of color i'm going from a yellow to some kind of greenish colors but i want to keep it fairly light and i wanted a more intense color up at the top gradating to um, to a, a lighter color at the bottom. And then I think I'm, then I'll think I'm, you know, I'm thinking about this darker area that's the ground and what color I want to do it in. And in this one, I just went with the color that I was using at the bottom, which was a blue green color. And then I just went darker into the ground. Um, and uh, so I, let's let's try that concept and I'll continue with my green here. I'll just make a darker version of that. So that's my phthalo blue and my Hansa yellow. And decide how dark I want it. Remember, I'm going to make the tree in in blues. So if you were doing this, if you wanted to do it just like this picture, this one is using some phthalo blue and white down here, and then adding a little bit of yellow to that to go up to more greens, and of course adding white as well. So I'm coming in with a bright green down here, and I may adjust that, and I may not. You never know. And I'm deciding how high I want that. And I think in this one, this one's got a fairly uh, crisp line across there, but I think I'm going to make mine blend a little. So I'm just bringing that green that's on my brush up into the yellow a little bit. And that gives me a much less distinct sort of horizon line so that um, it almost feels like it, the ground is going back into the distance and you have a little more depth there. I'm going to come in with my blue tree. So I'm going to, I've gone to a slightly smaller brush and I've got, just got some phthalo here with white in it. A little bit of white. I don't want to use a lot of white. I want to keep this fairly dark. And I just want to give myself a roadmap as to where I'm going to go with this tree. Now you could center your tree if you wanted, but this, this whole concept of this tree shape, which I'm going to follow is that it curves and is off balance. So I'm going to move my trunk more over to one side and then have my branches curl around and go to the other side. And that can be as strong or as weak an effect as you want. So I'm going to think about how far I want it to curve over. And I'm just going to start laying in that idea of the gnarly old tree trunk and how that might go. I always like to have roots showing on the on the ground as well. So my main trunk comes up like this and then I'm going to have branches that continue over this way to give that angle. 
And again, don't worry about messing this up because we'll reshape it. You can reshape it at any time as you go. But just have fun. This is, you know, this is a time to just have fun and enjoy playing with those shapes. And maybe I want this to come up even more, go down even more. It's just uh, thinking about shapes that just make you happy and express yourself. And your tree doesn't have to be also. You could have a more upright tree. You could have a more angular tree. I'm just kind of thinking about my branches getting smaller as they go up. I want to overlap some. Some are going to kind of look like they go up and they're going to connect to the tree trunk in front and some are going to be in back. I always go, I tend to go too much and then I dial it back and um, when I start putting in leaves then I can See, that's no good, but I'll leave it there for now because I'll paint it out. Um, if I start putting in leaves, then I can cover up what I don't like. It's good to just keep your keep keep yourself flowing with this process and try not to think about it and just have fun with where you're putting your your shapes. And then some turn out and some don't, and that's okay. I know I want to go completely off the canvas up here and think about that balance of the trunk. If it's going to be really bending over this way, then it's going to have to have a lot of weight on this side to keep it from falling over, basically. You can tell my yellow is still a little bit wet back there because it's mixing in a little bit with the blue, but that's okay. We don't mind. I'm just going to have some trunky stuff going on here. So that's kind of just a road map just to get your idea of where you're going to be going with this uh, trunk. If my tree is going to be blue, um, then I'm going to go more towards the blues and blue greens in the trunk and more towards blue the blue violets in the leaves. So we're, we're going to try that idea. So I need dark, medium, and light of all those things. And I need to get start by getting my tree trunk darker. So if it's going to go towards the blues and blue greens, let's start with our thalo blue again. And I'm going to add a little bit of Indian yellow to that because it's a darker yellow and I'm looking for a darker blue green. I um, want to make sure, yeah, let's see how that color works. So, you know, when I do this tree and put the darks in, I'm, I'm thinking about light coming from, you know, so the areas that are away from the light, like underneath this trunk and underneath here, they're going to have less light to them. And all those downward facing areas are going to have less light. So I'm going to put the darkest colors down there. Um, under here, under the tree on the ground where these roots are, those are going to be really in shadow because they're shadowed by the tree. I'm not going to go too far out into the branches at this point with my dark. Now I want to get something that is even darker than that. Uh, so I'm going to take my thalo blue and I'm going to add alizarin crimson to it. And that's just going to give me a darker dark because I need something that really comes out dark. And we won't be able to do it all on this layer because see how that's mixing with my lighter colors in there and so I'm just getting touches I'm just 
touches here and there of this very much darker color. And that gives us something to work on top of. I always do a lot of the dark, and then you bring your lights over the top using smaller and smaller shapes. So leaving some of the dark showing. And this, uh, this one has this one we're just building up really quickly. So these brush strokes that I'm putting down, I'm using lots of paint and I'm just laying that brush stroke down and leaving it alone. So it's starting to build up texture. There's a lot of texture to this painting with these little short strokes of this paint. So while I'm here, I'm gonna go continue with this idea of my blue-green trunk. And I think I'm going to go, as I go lighter in my color, it's going to get a little bit warmer. So let's add, let's stick with this pile of phthalo blue and add a little more Indian yellow to it. That's going to bring it up. I still want it to be blue green, but I want it to be leaning more towards blue. A little bit more than that. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this because I'm getting too much, I need to let that dry, but I also want a lighter. So I've got some darks. I want something a little bit lighter. And for the lighter, I'm thinking about the tops of the branches, the light hitting them, Don't, not covering up what I've already done, but just adding some more shapes. You can make your trunk as Get some real gnarls to it, if you are into that. And some bumps and lumps. Make sure to make it thick enough on the bottom so that it feels like it can hold up that kind of weight. Got my... These things going down here. This is just a really fun way to paint. It's fun to pick something like a tree or... or you could you could pick a, a field of flowers, anything like that, and just go with these dark and medium and light colors, remembering to shift the color as you shift the values. So you noticed as I went lighter, I added more yellow, and as I go darker, I added some of that alizarin crimson to it to make it a different color. Now let's think about if I'm moving more towards the blue colors, more towards ultramarine in the branches. So it's going to be kind of ultramarine blue and then moving a little bit into purples and lavenders for the lighter colors. So I'm going to think about doing it too. The branch, the leaves have background and foreground, you know, they have dark, medium and light. And there's leaves on the other side of the branches, and those are going to be a little more neutral, a little more in-between color. So if I take my ultramarine blue, and I lighten it up a little bit, and I think I'm going to start with a sort of a little bit of a neutral, more neutral blue. And in order to neutralize blue, I'm going to go across the color wheel to orange, and orange is made of yellow and red, right? So I'm going to just add a little tiny bit of those yellows and reds and see how quickly that neutralized that blue. Just because I want to put some leaves on the other side of the tree that are a little more neutral in value. And then we can bring bright colors on top of them and they'll stand out. So as I'm doing branches, I added more white to that because I also want these to stay pretty light. So as I'm working with this, putting in the leaves, I'm not going to think about painting leaves or leaf shapes. I'm going to think about groupings of leaves and how, where they would group together and what big shapes they would make. So. And what we're going to do is we're going to make these big shapes and then we're going to come back and paint around them to change them up as we feel like we need to. So don't cover up all your background. 
that's something to think about because there's certainly a tendency to do that. But we just want to start thinking where these are going to go. And I'm being sure to go off the canvas. I'm covering up the edges. So I don't want a big old trunk going, a branch going right off the edge and drawing my eye off the edge. And you're thinking of making smaller shapes when you're at the outsides. You can do, take your brush and let it dance around. So you can do some shapes that are really flat like this. You can do other shapes that are just using the very corner of your brush. And all I'm using is ultramarine blue and white at this point. Oh, and I neutralized it a little bit with yellow, tiny bit of yellow and a tiny bit of red to make a tiny bit of orange. And that will take that color and neutralize it down really quickly. And the reason that I'm doing that is so I can get, have brighter colors on top and they can show up. So these are kind of representing what's behind. So I'm going a, kind of around my branches. I'm going to go even lighter. What I generally do is every time I go back to my palette, I change my color. So I add a little bit of white or I add a little bit of a different color just to change it up. Maybe out at these edges we're going to be even lighter. Kind of just setting ourselves up here, and I'm not doing the I'm not going over the branches. I'm just setting myself up with some background stuff. You can bring some lights into your big areas on top of your darker blues. Really liking this kind of a little bit soft neutral blue against that yellow. I think that's really pretty. Kind of vibrates quite a bit too. Kind of fun. So, and you know, things like this, like I don't like where I went with that branch. So I'll come in later and I'll come in with some yellow and reshape that. We'll reshape all these branches so that they don't look quite so, so heavy and clunky uh, as we go. All right, so that's kind of the ones that are more in the background. And then I'm going to come in with my blue again. I'm just using the same blue pile and just pushing it one way or another. And so you're starting dark and moving to light. So I'm starting with my dark and I want to see how dark this is and how bright it is. And that's pretty dark. It's also, you know, ultramarine blue leans so much towards the purple. And I want something a little bit clearer, so I'm going to add some phthalo blue to that. Let's see if you can see the difference that made in the color by adding just a little bit of phthalo blue here versus just ultramarine blue there. It, it just brought it a little bit more into like a, a true blue color, which is, makes it nice to have both of those colors to work with. Now I'm using this dark and I'm thinking about the branches. I'm going to start going over some of these branches and create shapes. So try not to create polka dots in your, um, in your tree. So don't just take this one color and go spot, 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 spot. But instead think about creating shapes big like you know like one branch you know how in a tree one branch is going to have a bunch of leaves around it and you're gonna you start creating sort of a rhythm and a flow to the branches so they come up and you're also looking at areas you didn't particularly like and what the, the way the branches were working and i'm thinking about guiding my eye up and around, taking it on a little walk around your painting. It's going to come in here, go up and around. Maybe 
It's going to come up here. Doing big shapes, big shapes. Going to kind of go off up here. Okay, I'm going to start winding back down. So depending on the kind of tree and the kind of shapes you're going, but this one is all about just kind of winding, curving shapes. And so I'm reinforcing that with the way I'm creating the leaves. Sticking to this bright or this dark color of combination of phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. And so keep thinking about that, about how it curves around, comes around, got it coming up over there. So what will happen is these dark colors, we will come on top of these dark colors with our lighter colors. And you're, you're getting all kinds of mixing because the paint, the green paint's still wet. All the different colors are still kind of wet. That's okay. Maybe I'm going to go clear out here. Thinking, focusing on those shapes versus the shapes we've already put down. I don't want to cover them up all the way, but I also don't want to follow them. I want, I'm creating a new, new shape thing on top of it. And, and like I said, it kind of, it kind of starts speaking to you. This is a good, great exercise in letting the painting speak to you and don't think about it. Don't like try to decide where to put stuff, but just let your, let your hand just paint where it wants to paint. Get, uh, think about also different sizes of, and different shapes. So I, I'm, you notice I'm not, putting a, a brush stroke down and painting over it and over it and over it like this. I'm not petting my paint. I'm just taking some paint on my brush and setting down a brush stroke and leaving it, whether it's a flat shape like that, or if it's just a little corner of the brush, or if it's the end of the brush. And I'm also moving my brush around, physically moving the brush so that it touches the canvas in different ways and you don't have the same sizes and shapes of brush stroke continuously, but you have a variety of shapes going on. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> I have a great deal of fun doing these paintings. All right, before we go on too much further, and I'm still using this sort of medium large brush, I'm going to go back to my darker colors here, and I'm going to put some of these leaves on the ground. We've got some fallen leaves down here too. So I'm going to start putting, using that dark, this is just the ultramarine and the Thalo mixed together. I'm using horizontal strokes, right? Whereas up here in the tree, I'm using more vertical strokes and rounded or squared off shapes. Down here while I'm on the ground, I'm going to use more shapes that are horizontal. Something like this. And I'm just putting down the dark I'm thinking about it, and I may change these later, but I want to start getting these colors on the ground. Just these little shapes, nothing, nothing too particular. And we'll let those go for a little while while we think about this tree. So we did ultramarine blue and phthalo blue for our dark color. Now we're going to go a little bit lighter, right? So I'm starting again with that ultramarine blue and the phthalo. 
But now as I go lighter, I also want to go warmer. So it's going to have more ultramarine blue than thalo. And then we're going to add some white and see what color we've got going on. And let's put a little bit of that up there. But first, I'm going to change my brush. Now that I've got my bigger shapes, I'm going to change to a slightly narrower brush because I'm going to be making smaller shapes. And if you've got a bigger canvas that you're working on, then your brush will be uh, proportionally bigger. This one is a number two bright brush. It's just It's like a flat, but it has shorter bristles. So let's see what this color does and see if we like it if I come in on top of some of my dark areas and start adding some of this color. I like it. It's pretty pretty interesting. It's not um doesn't stand out a lot, but it will start getting us some texture going on. So here and there I'm gonna put some of this color into the dark areas that we did, but just smaller than the dark areas. I'm going to add more white to that. It's a pretty subtle shift in value. So as I'm going to add more white and more ultramarine, because the ultramarine is warmer, so I'm moving that blue color into the warm blues versus the blue-greens. Let's see how that compares. That's pretty good. It's, it's getting mixed up with my blue-green I had below it, and I want a more clear color. So I'm going to move over into a slightly different area, which is ultramarine blue and white, because this whole area is starting to have a lot of colors mixed into it. And I'm also being careful to pick a clean area of my pile to get clean color. So let's see how that compares. Yeah, it's moving kind of more towards the colors that we had in the background. I'm going to go lighter. Just getting more paint because I need to use a lot of paint at this point to get because I've got so many layers built up. And we'll start working on the tree trunk a little bit after it gets so wet that I can't really add anything interesting. Because as I'm putting this down, it's really mixing with the other colors a lot. And that's okay. It's just creating some different colors. But one way you keep it from mixing too much is to wipe off your brush in between because it has picked up some of the color underneath there and then just lay that bit of color down and move on. So now I want to move, I'm going to try one more before we have to move on because we've got too much paint and I'm going to go with the ultramarine blue and I want to go even a little warmer so I'm going to add just a touch of our naphthal red. This isn't going to make a bright purple because ultramarine blue and naphthal red just doesn't make a bright purple, but it will be a little bit warmer of a version of our paint, of our color, because as we're getting lighter, we're getting, we're, we're getting warmer in our color, and adding red to your blue is going to make it warmer. We're going to see if we like that. If not, we, we may try some, we may go to some alizarin crimson. Let's try that mix. Let's see if we can get a color that kind of stands out a little bit more to us. So, rinsing my brush to get some nice, clear, clean mixes. And I'm going to use my ultramarine blue and my alizarin crimson and white. I'm also trying to find a clean area in the white. That's important too. Well, that's, I, I wouldn't say it's much clearer, but it's a little bit maybe. We're gonna have to let this dry because every time, see how I 
picking up that paint underneath it so I'm not getting a clear um, a clear covering there. Let's put some of it down here where we're a little more dry. Go back to some blue in that. We do want our tree to read blue, not purple. That was the, the original idea, though. You know what? Ideas change. It's not written in stone. So what I'm doing is going to the top of some of these, of the dark blue that we put down, which are, these are leaves on the ground. So I'm leaving some of that dark showing and coming on top of the dark, the top part, and leaving the bottom dark as if it's in shadow. To start creating some of those leaves, keeping my shapes horizontal. And we'll also be thinking about when we get, if we put any out here, they're going to be quite a bit lighter because they're going to get more sun. But let's see how we're going with our tree. All right, so this is still pretty wet, but I think we could get some darks in there. It still needs some more shape. It needs to be a more obvious shape, so it needs more color. What am I doing here? I'm adding some Indian yellow to that phthalo blue for a blue-green, dark blue-green for our trunk. Okay, so under here. The other the other trick with getting it to stick when you've got a lot of layers building is to keep your your brush very horizontal to the canvas so you're just putting the flat of your brush down there. And that it tends to let that sit, stick a little bit more to the wet paint. So there's darks under these roots little bit. You see some dark. Got some dark shapes here. And I'm just making a really bumpy textural kind of a tree, tree bark. So I'm not thinking anything about particular shapes. I'm just thinking about the underside of a bump would be more shadowed and the top side of a bump would be uh, lighter. Thinking about that kind of stuff. I want some darks in here in the middle. I'm working around what I've done with the, the leaves. Working around, making sure they're thick enough. I've got something funny going there where it looks like all the branches are coming out of the same spot. That's not attractive. I'll fix that with the background. You can always fix things by painting around. This over here needs to... I also like to kind of stop and start directions. So... As I'm just playing here with the dark. Okay, and then I'm going to go into lighter again, adding white and adding more phthalo blue is going to make it more of a blue-green. Be sure you get it light enough that you get a shift in value so you can see that. I'm using this smaller brush and I'm just making smaller and smaller shapes just to create texture. And also because you don't want to cover up everything, all the other colors you put down when you bring in a new color. Some of this is gonna be visible through our branches. Dots of color here and there. And then I'm going to go lighter still. And I'm going to add a little more yellow to it to make it warmer. So remember as you add titanium white, you're also cooling your color down. 
And we want it to go warmer as it gets lighter, not cooler. We go even lighter than that. When we work with acrylics, we always know that they're going to dry a little bit darker. Especially as you get into your lighter shades. So if it looks too light, it's just about right. So I'm thinking about those areas in the trunk that are facing up and they're going to get more of the light. Maybe some of these roots down here getting a little bit of light. It's a very loose um, interpretation of nature, I guess we would say, but I am thinking about light source and light direction a little bit. I get into the outer edges too, your branches also get lighter. So we got some of that going on. That trunk's starting to look nice and gnarly. It's fun, huh? All right. I'm gonna work a little bit with my yellow and reshape some of these branches. They're all really wet, so it might not be that easy, but we'll see what we can do. This is my Hansa yellow with white. And I'm thinking about some of these places where I didn't particularly like where the branch went. Maybe I want to reshape it. See how wet it is. So we're not going to be able to do a whole lot. Maybe more out here in the edges. We'll be able to maybe thin some of these out a little bit. So when I'm, I'm picking up a lot of this green and so what I'm doing is wiping off my wiping off my brush whenever I see that I've picked up the color underneath because oh, the whole point with this one is trying to keep these colors clean and pretty. I know I can reshape these outer leaves because they're really dry by now. So to do that, to just create some more interesting shapes, I'm just coming in with that yellow around the edges and reshaping and that makes just makes some more complex shapes more interesting shapes putting little interior dots where the background is showing through I like to squint my eyes when I do this so when you squint your eyes you can see the shapes more and you don't worry as much about detail you want to take some of these big blobs and make them a little smaller. Give them some edges, you know, make them a little bit more leaf-like. Think about where in your background you are. If you, if you come down into your gradation, then you, you know, you need to go into the color that you used behind it and but most, mine is mostly, um, mostly yellow, so it's not too bad. So I am mixing a little bit, but I'm not hating that because it's giving, giving me some different, different colors and values in there that are kind of fun in places where those greens are still wet. But what you do have to do is if you notice that you've picked up a lot of that color on your brush, you've got to be sure to rinse, or at least wipe your brush off on your paper towel. Because I know a lot of these branches up here I'm going to reshape so they're not so thick and clunky. And especially down here, they've gotten really strangely clunky. And also in areas where you've got um, uh, you seen the canvas showing through. This really helps to thicken that up. You can see I need more white down here because I'm quite a bit different than my background color in there. So 
And I'm just thinking about how that shape of that uh, branch was not interesting. Not interesting. I want them to be interesting, curly, gnarly shapes. And somehow I'm going to reshape in here, but I think I might just bring in a bunch more leaves because I don't want I don't want them all coming out like from one point. I want some further down. Yeah, I don't like that one. Let's do something different there. Maybe we like, maybe we want to get a little bit thin, thinner here in this, as the trunk goes up. Yeah, and I'm getting, I'm, it's mixing there, but at least I know where I want to reshape that. And then after it dries, I can come back and reinforce that. I just, I want the trunk to be thicker at the bottom and then getting thinner. I think I want this to come in there. Back and forth. It's just this back and forth process that you go through with these colors to bring them in to where you want them to be. And I know that yellow's getting really dirty. I know this area needs some yellow spots in it. It's getting too thick. All right, I like, I'm liking my overall shapes. If you look at the, um, at this one, you can see that there's really a big value shift between the darkest leaves and the lightest leaves. So, and you can see how on mine, I'm still uh, kind of in this mid range. I don't have really dark darks in there and I don't have really light lights in there. And so this one is feeling more flat. It's not looking like there's as much, um, as much form to what's going on. All right, so I know I've got to get some darker darks in there and some lighter lights in there. So let me think about my, what color I'm going to use for my dark blues. If I take my thalo blue and I add alizarin crimson to it, I'm going to get a very dark dark. It's also going to be kind of purpley, but I think I'm all right with that just for the sake of being able to get a dark dark. So I'm going to think about, I'm going to squint again and see in some of these areas, I would want, I'd want it to, to go back, you know, to have more depth in certain areas, so I'm going to want to add some dark shapes, and that will give me more depth. All these different groupings of leaves that I've got going on. And hopefully we'll be able to I'm using such thick paint that hopefully we'll be able to get to a, a level where you can see where the painting's going. I know I'll have to come back after it dries and do a few more touch-ups just to get it to have enough value range on there. I'm, a, I'm also starting to think in my mind how whether I'm going to keep this really kind of monochromatic or if I'm going to really bring in some pops of maybe pink or purple. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. I know I started with just my limited palette, but I'm really needing that purple to be purpler. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of dioxazine purple to give myself some more Brilliant purples and dioxazine purple is also a very dark color as you can see but If I add some white to it 
I'm going to get a real pretty purple. And I just feel like in my tree, my blue tree, I need some of this purple. And also because that purple will really dance against the yellow of the background. And those neutralized purples weren't doing it for me. So sometimes just be that's just the way pigments are, even though we know blue and red make purple, the different kinds of pigments just mix differently and just doing some experimentation with that and playing with that can really help you uh, understand that and see it and it help broaden out your understanding of color. See if I get these purples really vibrating against the yellow, it's going to make it happier, I think. That's my plan anyway. I'm not going to use a whole lot of it, but I just want some. I'm going to make it even lighter. Because that's going to be my lightest light of my, of my blues. So whereas this one goes from purples to pinks, this one's going to go from blues to purples. In, in its way of getting warmer as it gets lighter. Got all these fun shapes I made out there from reshaping the, reshaping it with the background. And you also, I also always find that I'll let, I'll paint for a while and then I'll let it sit and dry and I'll think about it and come back the next day. And it's usually the light colors that you have to come back with to give it a little more oomph. Remember that, remember I was talking about the getting these undulating shapes going by the way your eye is following the shapes of color? Still thinking about that as I do these purpley colors in there. Just working towards it not looking quite so flat. So there's some purples. Now I'm going to go back to some blues. And I'm going to go back to some ultramarine and thalo mixed blues because those give me the more blue blues, more vivid blues versus the purpley blues. Not necessarily vivid, but leaning towards cooler. Really looking at those shapes now, thinking about this area in here. I think I'm going to really play up with lighter colors and brighter colors to bring it forward. Of different areas where I'll do that. You can see that on this one I have different areas that have that I'm really playing with that lighter colors to bring them forward and some up here too I think we're just we're just creating texture by adding these different colors and values if you put your lightest colors right next to your darkest colors that contrast is it's a contrast of values and that also draws your attention so contrast of color, contrast of value, contrast of shape, all those things will draw your attention to an area and make it more important in your painting. Now I'm just going using that blue and just going lighter and lighter. I've got that purple in there that I like for adding color. And now I'm getting, I'm really focusing on this value idea. I'm getting these lights against the darks in this area. See how that one light against the dark, that really pops out. And then around the edges, where you're not necessarily wanting the eye, you're not leading the eye so much off the canvas, you leave those values a little closer to each other so they don't capture the eye. But I know I want my eye to come up here. 
and circle back around down here. Also keep, I keep looking out for those just areas that aren't working that I can cover up with the leaves. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty fun, huh? As soon as this gets a little more dry, we can bring the yellow in there and reshape that. I also want to think about smaller shapes at the edges like I'm doing here and bigger shapes towards the center and closer to us. So the closer you get to us, the bigger the, the shapes and then the further away, the smaller the shapes. I kind of like the way the darks are over here as if they're in shadow more. That's kind of fun. And then they're lighter over here, the little the little tiny shapes along the edges. I think what I might do at this point, oh, I want to bring some of this lighter blue down here in some of these leaves on the ground. So remember dark, medium, and light. That's going to give us our sense of form and shape, three-dimensionality. So I'm not covering up all of the dark. I'm just adding touches of this lighter color. So these are like not individual leaves necessarily on the ground, but they're clumps of leaves. So, and they're bent in all different directions, so they catch the light in different ways. And some of these are going to be up onto the roots. Not, they're not all going to be on the ground. So I'll do some of that and come back with some of my darker blue that goes underneath it. So you can go back and forth. Back and forth just having fun. And then I want some darker dark. That's that phthalo blue in the alizarin crimson. Gives you a very dark dark. Could also use that dioxazine purple now that I have it on the on there because it will also give us a very dark dark. Bringing those darks back in. Just touch that brush and move on. Don't don't labor over the shape. Just let it be kind of fun and loose. See this area in here, I need to think about. I feel like I want something coming out towards us more. Kind of this area is coming towards us a little more. And then we'll have a darker passage in here. And then I think this area up here, I want coming out towards us a little bit more. So to do that, I'm going to use some of my purple. Because that purple is warmer, so it's coming outwards. And I don't want to cover up all that yellow, because having that purple there against the yellow is really going to make it zing. Let's get a lighter version of that. Add a little bit of red to it. Lighter, warmer. So whenever I add white, I'm going to add something to warm it as well. In this case, it's red. It's kind of, yeah, I like that idea. It's going to bring me a little more interest right in here and something that's coming outwards. In our outwards areas, I'm going to use more of this purple. And then one lighter, dark, medium, and light. Whatever area you're working in, just start with your dark. Add a little white and something to warm it. And then add a little more white and something to warm it a little more.
smaller and smaller shapes. Big dark shapes, medium sized medium shapes, and little tiny light shapes. That's starting to come pretty good. I'm still not happy with this area around the trunk. And feels like, I know what it feels like. It feels like this whole, this whole branch should have started a little bit lower, like right around in there. So don't be afraid to mess it up because if you don't like it, you can just redo it. Use that phthalo blue and Indian yellow. So it feels like this trunk, this branch here, should be more coming up from here. And then coming back down. And which would bring one of these branches maybe coming off of here. We'll see if that can go. See if it's dry enough to be able to put some yellow in there in the background. Probably not, but I want this to have some shape more like this. See how that this is coming up here, this is coming around here. We got that one coming off of there. It's different, adding some interest. That one's coming that way. Maybe this one is coming this way. Huh. See how you can just play and, and see what works for you and what doesn't? And then if it doesn't, you just try again, something different. I'm going to use some of this really darker phthalo with alizarin so I can get some dark into this trunk here. Dark into here. And then some lighter colors. Being super careful because this paint is really gumming up because it's so thick. But if I get my, know where I'm going, then I can come back when it's a little more dry. And do more. And that given that needs to be even more in, but of course my blue, my yellow, is going to mix in with that blue because I want this branch. It's more like that. So that all we're going to let dry thinning it out so that it can dry better. And we can decide if we like it or we don't. A little bit less. A little bit thicker. Fun stuff. Just playing. Squinting your eyes to, and then starting to see a little bit where you want to go. I want to get a few twiggy things in there, but I think I'm too, um, well, I'm not too, I'm not too wet down there. So let's try that. I'm going to go to my, my liner brush here for a minute. So what do I want to do? I want to bring in a few, um, little twiggy branches in my darker blue greens and I'm using this long thin liner brush and this is the only time I use extra water when I'm painting so if 
if you don't have enough water in your paint when you're using this liner, it just doesn't fill up the brush. It's a softer brush than the than the others, and it, it just won't flow off of your brush as well. So if I put a bunch of water in there, and then I go back and forth, creating kind of an, a knife edge onto the brush, then I can hold it and get some really thin, thin little twiggy stuff coming down here. And I like to, I like it just to be squiggly and not not real careful. It's almost scribbly. I'm holding the brush super super lightly and just get, letting it dot and squiggle around. That's the way I like to do it because I like to have some of these just squiggly tiny uh, branches twigs coming around. The edges, you can do some in the dark and you can do it in the lighter as well. Go across your yellow areas if you want to. I think I'll do some with this little bit of lighter green blue. Let's do some of that. I like it against the, the yellow, it's fun. Maybe there'll be some sticks on the ground. And it, it's fun because you can just, you know, squiggle away and then if it doesn't work, it's, you, it's okay, you can cover it up. I like these along the edges too, the lighter colors along the edges and above, going over some of my branches with some squiggles. Or, um, I mean my leaves, my foliage. That's fun. That's yeah. It adds a little. It's almost like confetti. It's kind of happy, huh? I need to bring some of these colors because I'm going off of the canvas right there. Um, I don't want it to. It feels like the it feels like it's crowded in like it's not completely going off the canvas so what I'm gonna do is bring some of this purple up there right off the edge so it doesn't feel like it's stopping so and then the, let's do some lighter purple that's all pretty dry out there too, so my tree is getting more and more towards purple. When I started out, I wanted it to be blue, but let's see if we're yeah, I'm I wanna do uh I wanna do some pretty significant reshaping with my background color, but I'm I'm so wet I'm not sure I'm gonna get to it today. But I don't know if you can see, but in here in this area, I kind of started out like this. Do you see how the shape is becoming real sort of rounded and um, the edges are are kind of consistent kind of geometrical almost and this one started out that way too with i got thicker and thicker with the leaves and then i came back with my blue greens and right in this area covered up all that those leaves that were getting just too making the shape too symmetrical and rounded so I came back in with those and reshaped pretty significantly, adding a lot of that background color to lighten it up. And it's a really good way to do it because you see you get all these really unusual shapes in here that are forming. And they're not, um, they're not just the, the round shapes of the, of the thing going on. But I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to be able to do today just because everything is super wet. But I'm going to go back up one, one brush size here to something a little bit wider. And make sure I got all that blue off of there. Try to get some yellow that's fairly clean. No fun going off. I still got a little bit of room up here. 
And if, you're, if your yellow is getting too dirty or white's getting too dirty, be sure to just stop and, and uh, squeeze yourself out some fresh paint because it makes a difference. But let me see if I can get away from this. And I'm going to look at where where I like things, the things that are going on, and where I'm just not quite as happy. It doesn't have to be a, like that shape. But um, if I squint my eyes and look at it, I think I'm, I'm something about in here I'm not as happy with. And I know I'm going to get color mixing because it's not dry. But I can, I can start to think about the shape. I know I need to keep weight over here for the balance of the tree, but I just don't want it to have the edge so specifically rounded like that. And so I've got to decide where I want it to come in. And I'll leave little bits of what's there because that just adds interest. So you can just have fun reshaping. And this has gotten all way too thick in there. Some things I like, some I don't. Lightening it up. And that process of reshaping by using your background color really makes for some interesting shapes. Try again with this. I know it's still too wet, but we're doing it in kind of layers. I don't want my background to have a lot of texture to it, so if it's uh, if it gets bumpy looking, I'm going to come back and even that out a little bit, flatten it out a little bit. Looking at the shapes that it's forming and deciding where I'm going to put. Now I don't have that same kind of rounded look on this side. I do up here. There's too much up here. This definitely needs some place where it's got yellow shining through. That needed white in it. That was just straight yellow. Back and forth, back and forth. Changing those shapes. If you, if you really just focus on variety of size and shape, it, it gives, gives you a lot more interest. Variety of size and shape. That needed to be lightened up. Come alongside some of these branches. Give them more room to shine. I like to, I usually have music on when I'm painting like this, just to keep my hand flowing and keep my mind from going, you know, you don't want your brain catching up and starting to do a lot of talking to you. Kind of get the idea of where we're going. See how wet that is? That paint is so thick it's still picking up the color of the trunk. That's a better shape. I got a lot more of this going on. Oh, up here, this needs something. Let's get, maybe needs something more rounding this way. I don't know. We'll see if, how we like that. This area needs some reshaping it got really
thick and even over there. That's a little more interesting. Um, let's see, I've got, I need to come in with some, this is be an area I could work. I need to come in with some blue green. That was our yellow and our thalo to work around the shapes of these. Same, same thing with the leaves on the ground, working around them will reshape them the way that you might want them. So I'm working with hands of yellow and thalo blue down here for this blue green. And I'm also getting rid of some of that area that's the canvas texture is showing through and reshaping the sort of groupings of leaves to make them kind of flatter on the bottom or to come in on them a little bit, which gives you little pointy shapes that look more like the edges of leaves on the ground. Making sure they're not all in a line and they're, they're not all the same shape. And again, that squinting. Squinting is just so important in painting. And this big branch here that got real sort of, I mean that root that got kind of thick and I can make that smaller, I can reshape that. Maybe bring some of this color up in here. That's looking pretty good. Over here it's moving towards more of the yellowy colors. So I gotta use my yellowy greens over here to keep my gradation sort of. And I think I even wanna gradate it even more here so that under the tree I'm getting even more of a darker green so I'm adding more thalo to that a little bit of white find a color that's a little darker so I have still another gradation I'm kind of thinking in terms of there being some shadow under the tree I don't want it to be too much like the the tree trunk, so I've got to be sure to keep it greener. And maybe over here, it's going to add a feeling of maybe some dappled light. I love dappled light, so I'm just going to add this darker green in places. Go off the edge up here. I go off the corner up here. Well, that doesn't make sense because if, well, maybe the tree would be shadowing over that far. Some dab of light to it going on on the ground. That's fun. Add back some white and some yellow. My colors are getting really mixed up now. But yeah, over here, actually, I think I want to keep it lighter because we're getting to the edges of the tree where you'd be having more influence from the sun. and Maybe more shadow in there. So again, painting around, if I paint those blobs of the green dappled light and then I paint back around them, it just makes them be a little bit more interesting of shape as we go in there. That's kind of fun. Kind of fun. And then, because I'm working with dappled light, I want to bring some of these lighter purple colors. Let's see, let me get my brush cleaned off so I don't mix my colors. If I mix that green and that purple, I'm going to immediately get mud, so I don't want to do that. So I'm mixing my, rinsing my brush really well. So over in the light, I'm going to get more warm colors. So where where, where there's more like of the sunlight showing over here versus the darker spots, there's going to be more purple. And maybe in one or two areas where it's in the 
sunny spot. This is just really subtle. Sometimes I do this very, a very strong version of this and make the values really different. But here I just want a subtle feeling of some of these are in lighter areas than others. Maybe the sun is more diffuse and not as well. The whole sky is yellow, so that's pretty darn sunny, I'd say. Adding white and red for a lighter version. Always going to dark, medium, and light if we don't want it to look flat. So, smaller and smaller bits. When you go with the lighter colors, and that might be pretty fun. I got this color going, so I'm going to go back into my purple areas in the tree now and do another layer of light because as you probably noticed as yours is drying, those light areas are drying darker. So wherever I'm going with my sort of purple colors, I'm going to lighten, get another version of light. And you, you know, we still have stuff to work with, with once that dries and getting that yellow really dialed in there. Let me go back to my blue ultramarine with some phthalo and some white. That's a little bit of a dirty white, but that's okay. I can live with that. Just to also bring in some more blues here and there. Like over here, I feel like there's too much dark. Like some of these, I want that dark to show, but I don't want. don't want it to overwhelm. I just want it to be little touches of dark up in the tree. So wherever I've got a lot of dark, I'm making that smaller. And wherever I've got a shape of blue that just looks unfinished, or a canvas is showing through, or there's only one color in an area, I'm going to bring in some more texture by doing that. And I know that across some here, somewhere here, I'm going to bring some, some leaves in there. It's so wet. I have to not get carried away, but obviously there needs to be something coming across those a little bit breaking up that shape let's go lighter lighter And just for fun, I know I still have yellow that I have to put in there once all that dries so I can get a nice clean, but I know where I'm going to put the yellow and where I'm going to clean up these areas that are muddy. But just for fun, I'm going to bring in, bring in the big guns, some pure white, and just in a few of these areas. And I never don't use very much pure white, and I'll almost always put a little yellow in it. Actually, that's got a little yellow in it now because my white was um, dirty and that's okay. But in these areas where I'm wanting the most attention and the most them to be most forward, I'm going to put some touches of white. And I'm going to put some... Ooh! Remember that thing I was talking about having something that was going to sparkle up a little bit. Hmm, I'm thinking about some tiny touches of red just to sparkle up this tree trunk. I don't know. I think the yellow is enough sparkle. I don't think we need that in this one. And I don't think I need pure white on the trunk. But I'm going to put a little bit of white here and there.
like that. Hmm. God, I'm really stuck on that orange in my mind now. Or red. Let me try it, see if I hate it. Okay, there's some red. I'm gonna come in with some red and yellow just for some excitement around that tree trunk. In fact, I think I'll move to my, I've got a round brush here. It'll make a little tiny pinpoint. What's going to happen if I give us a little pinpoint of light? Almost subliminal. It's almost subliminal color. Well, not if I keep doing it. But I'm just going to put some little touches of orange to liven that up a little bit. I can't hardly see it, but I think it's fun. Put it here and there. Up in there. Then I'm going to go a little bit lighter with it. And a little bit more yellow. Give a real yellow orange. Let's see, cover up some of those. Ooh, I like that. Maybe across some of these shapes. Yeah, I like it more yellow-orange like that. And we kind of have our fun little tree. Yeah, it's looking pretty fun. I'll come back after it dries so that I can get these areas more of a solid yellow. And I'll likely come back after it dries and do one more layer of bright. But that's really what I like to do at this point, is let it sit overnight someplace where I see it often and glance at it. And then I can come in and do the touch-up. So today we are just touching up our painting from yesterday. After it had a chance to dry and after I had a chance to think about the things I want to change and make my list. And the first thing on my list is to reinforce these yellows that got mixed, got left with too much green and mixed colors in them because the paint was wet yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead. And remember, especially when you're matching paint color, that the acrylics are going to dry darker. So if I want to match that yellow exactly, then the paint I'm putting down right now has to be a little bit lighter than, uh, than the dry paint in order for it to dry the same color. So right now I'm not even thinking about the, um, the shapes I'm going to fix so much as I'm just getting rid of the sort of muddy greens that I left in there from yesterday. But I do want to do a little bit of reshaping. Obviously up in here, that's looking a little strange, but I think I need some branches coming in there. And so I'll, I'll do that with the branches. But in general, when you are doing sky holes this, like this. We call these sky holes when you make holes in the foliage that peek through to the sky behind. You want to choose a color that's a little bit darker than the color you used in the background because there's something about the little tiny small sky holes that when, when a, a value is surrounded by dark it makes it even lighter and it makes it pop out a lot more. So that is something in general you would want to do when you're working with sky holes. Being a little careful in here because I'm working around the shapes of these branches and I want to remember where they are and not cover over something that I wanted to keep. This area I know I want to rework a little bit. Let's just 
just reinforcing those yellows. This branch got really thick on the end, so I'll thin that out. So this maybe needs to be thinner there. Just looks like it needs to be a little thinner. So I think that's going to be the fix there. Oh, I also, I'm just going to add a tad bit of blue to the edge of this. Because I want to fix um, a little bit my, I like my little orange accents that I put in here. I think that they're very interesting, but they're almost too much. They're sitting up on the, on the tree, like the, almost like a little line of bugs, like orange ants going up there. And I, I want them, don't want them to be quite that. So what I'm looking for here is just a slightly more green yellow, which is what's in this area, like that, okay? So if I come in here and just flatten these off a little bit, then they're not going to look quite so much like bugs sitting up on the, on the tree trunk, and more like uh, the light hitting the tree. That's all. That's a little fussy little thing, and not that big of a deal, but just something that I liked to do. I'm kind of going over this because this got to be such a sharp edge there. And if I'm just lightly going over it with this yellow green, I think I can soften that edge a little bit, give it sort of a little shadow on the edge so it's not quite so sharp because that makes it very two dimensional and flat. And I think I might as well, while I got this, do this down here too. Just softening those edges up a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that. The next thing on my list was this left lower area here. It just doesn't seem to tie in. It needs some more of those blues. So we had, these were mostly the blues were some ultramarine with a little thalo in there. Oops, I got a lot of thalo in there. So I'll put more ultramarine and some white to get some of these blues in there. And let's see, try that. You always have to try your colors up against what you've done before because it'll always look a little bit different against the colors you have versus on your palette. So that wasn't too bad. It was just a little light, a little dark. So I'm going to go a little lighter. So remember, they're going to dry darker as well. It's just something that you get used to when you're dealing with acrylics. Now, so I wanted some a little bit of bigger shape there. That's it. Just some bigger shape. So now I'm looking at some of these areas where I added the yellow and just coming back in with working back into those shapes so they don't also don't look cut out but they have some variation especially up here where I got some really similar shaped holes and they're evenly spaced apart which is typical of me but what I'm going to so what I'm going to do is just change those shapes a little bit on some of them so they aren't so evenly spaced and evenly shaped. I'm going to go a little bit lighter again. And as I go lighter, I'm going to add something to warm that color up. So I'm going to add a little bit of red as I add my white. So I'm going to just do that in a couple of those places where I just put down that one solid color so that I keep Keep some d dimension in those areas as well. All right, so that I think feels a little better over here in terms of this area feeling more integrated with the tree itself and the shapes beyond that. I might put some purple over there, but I'm not really sure about that. Okay, the other thing on my list was to 
to find some of these branches a little bit better and have them more curvy and curly like like the original one so this was the thalo blue with some indian yellow added to it to make these blue greens in the in the trunk one thing i knew i wanted to do too is this one gets skinnier and then fatter there and i don't want it to do that so I just want to fatten that up just a tad like that. And then I wanted to add these branches here that got really um, straight. I want to curve them. I want some curves up here that are really obvious. So I'm just using that eye squinting thing Remember, squinting our eyes is something that's really helpful. So I want curves going in different directions. And I want to reinforce those curving lines. Let's see, this one I think would come in front. Think about way, the way the branches are growing and which branches are in front and which branches are behind. And, and where you've got, so if I've got a branch that's right there, that branch has to continue somewhere. It can't just stop in midair unless it's been cut off, but ours haven't been cut off. So I want to make sure I've got some continuity to where the branches are going and how they're going. So, and things like this where this is thick and then all of a sudden it gets super thin and and it's unconnected. You want to watch out for places like that. Not that it really matters, but you know, it's just for fun. So I've got these curves going on, just a few curves showing up. And I don't want them all the same, the same shape, and I don't want them all going in the same direction, but I want to vary that up. So I'm going to add, no, not yet. I want to get a little bit a darker color, but I'm not going to do that yet. So all of these that look straight to me, I'm just giving them a curve and maybe adding a few. I want to try to stay pretty thin up in the edges. I don't want to get too thick. So I think what I'll do too is go ahead back with my liner brush to add a little bit um, a little bit of this I want to go a little bit lighter because I'm going toward the edges whenever you do those those uh, the, the smaller branches you want to go a little bit lighter because they're smaller so they're going to appear lighter because the light comes around them and the smaller they are, the lighter they, they look. I'm adding ultramarine blue to that, just to make that color a little less vibrant. And then I added white to get it lighter. And I'm adding water to that color because I'm using my liner brush. So whenever I use that liner brush, I add water. So I just want to get some really curly I think this probably comes from having grown up in California and around oak trees, but I often have really gnarly, curly branches on my trees. But depending on where you grew up, that might not be the case. I think we all have sort of an archetypal tree in our mind. that We tend to draw when we draw a tree. So this having a little bit of this lighter too, I'm adding that to some of these darker trunks that I just, darker branches I just made to uh, give them a little dimension so they're not, they're not just flat. And let's see, we had this one going over this one. I gotta remember that. 
This branch is coming over the top, so I'm going to make it lighter. And those other branches are going back. And I'm going to, now I've made that really flat and light, so I'll come back in a minute and give it some other texture there too. Adding a little bit of this light here and there on the dark branches. I've got my curvy branch, curvy twigs going on here and there. Don't want to get too fussy, just want some movement. That's pretty good. All right, let's go back to doing some kind of a green here. I think I'll use Indian yellow and phthalo. So I'm using the phthalo to keep my colors bright, but I'm using the Indian yellow, which is going to be a little bit more neutral, a little bit more muddied up than my hands of yellow would be. So adding a little bit of white to that. And then I can also cover up some of these brighter. I'm going to leave them over here because it's kind of a transition from those more neutral colors to the brighter colors. All right, I added a little bit of yellow to that because, again, even if I am trying to stay neutral, when I go lighter, I need to shift the color a little bit warmer. There's something I need to do with foliage over here. Let's use the blue. This was supposed to be a blue tree and it started getting a lot more purple than it does blue. So I'm using the blues to bring back in and reshape some of these areas. All right, so this had a lot of little tiny spots all together. And so I'm adding some bigger spots. So that looks a little more interesting. That just feels like it needs a little bit going across there. And then the same up here. So I went whiter with that, with that blue, so I've got to add in a little bit of red, warm it up, so we don't want it to go cool. Let's see, because I just want one more, a little bit lighter on the blue. to give dimension to those spots I just made. Go lighter still, can't see that. All right. Over here I needed a little more dimensionality, a little more white. I want to be able to see the difference in value when I put it down there. And because that blue is wet, it's uh, blending in a little bit with the darker underneath it. And so I'm losing that, uh, that contrast and value. And I want it to have some of that contrast and value. Some of these blues down here, these fallen leaves, they could use some of these lighter colors just to set them off. I need to liven this up down here. I just need some touches of yellow. Maybe, you know, maybe that dappled light is bringing in some touches of yellow. Just to pull it down in there a little bit. I don't want to overdo. I just want to bring some of it in there. It gives it a little sparkle. All right, that and a little sparkle of purple down there, lighter purple, brighter purple. This isn't lighter, but it's a little bit brighter. So maybe some darker purple in the shadows is what I need. See, you never know until you try what it is that you actually need. And if I didn't like that, I'd just come back over it and cover it up. Yeah, that looks a little more lively down there now. The, the green ground is staying calm and, uh, and the leaves are looking lively.
All right. There she is, blue tree. We'll call that blue tree.